This week in our Devos, we're taking a look at the love passage. And usually when we hear or think about this passage, uh, we think of it in the context of being read at a wedding and it's being shared all poetically and everybody has googly eyes. And in reality, the actual words kind of come and go. Uh, but the meaning of each of these words is so significant. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul is defining love and he does that by describing what love is and what love is not. Paul says that love is patient and kind, and then he says that love does not envy. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. I was looking at this word envy and was so intrigued because if you Google the definition, it says this, it says a feeling of discontented or resentful longing. And here's what was so interesting to me. Resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. I was so fascinated by the second half of that definition because what I saw is that envy is an outcome of comparison. In other words, the only way you can envy someone or something is when you've compared it to yourself. And they say comparison is the thief, thief of joy, but it's a lot more destructive than stealing your joy when comparison turns to envy. One of the first stories in the Bible shows how comparison leads to envy, which leads to murder. It's the story of two brothers, Cain and Abel. Cain gives offerings to God that are good, but Abel gives his absolute best and has favor in the Lord. Cain, comparing himself and his offering to Abel, was very angry and ended up killing his brother. They were brothers. They were supposed to love each other. But when one envied the other, look what happened. Unfortunately, that example isn't uncommon today. Maybe not always to the degree of murder, but still not uncommon. So many families, marriages, friendships get destroyed because of envy. It leads to abuse, divorce. People will cut each other out of their lives. People that you're supposed to love. So let me give you a word that I think combats envy. The word is empathy. Empathy basically means that you understand something or someone else. You understand their circumstances, their past, their actions, their feelings. Rob Palenka, GM of the LA Lakers, told a story about Kobe Bryant. Kobe Pat tragically passed away last year, but had one of the greatest, most accomplished careers in basketball. After Kobe was retired, he and Rob were having a deep conversation, and Rob asked him, looking back on your career, is there anything you would change or do differently? And Kobe responded, I wish I would have had more empathy towards my teammates. A re surprising response. He went on to explain though that one of his teammates, Paul Gasol, was, what, was the best relationship that he had with any teammate because early on in their time together, they sat down and they got to know each other. They learned one another's stories, where they came from, how they got to where they are today. And it was because of that, that they understood each other better and had empathy towards each other. They knew how and why they acted the way they did in certain circumstances, and that gave them an incredible chemistry. Kobe said, if I would have done that with more of my teammates, our teams would have had better chemistry, which would have led to more success. If a basketball player can acknowledge how significant empathy and understanding of his teammates is to be a better team, imagine how significant it can be for your family, your marriage, your coworkers, your neighbors, the church. Love does not envy, and God, the all-knowing and understanding creator of the universe, is love. This love calls us to serve one another, to bear one another's burdens, to speak in grace and truth to each other, all tangible ways to use empathy over envy.